Welcome to our Global Voices interview series. I'm Lana Wong, and we're coming to you live from the World Bank IMF Spring Meetings here in Washington, D.C. Every year, thousands of development professionals, creative innovators, and global leaders come to discuss the pressing issues of the world. And you know, today we're so lucky because we have one of these creative innovators with us today, the co-founder of the new reality company, Winslow Porter. So welcome, Winslow. Thanks so much for having me. Sure. Real quick before, if we can uh, also welcome our online audience and please submit any questions you may have in the comments section of the video. So let's dive in. Um, Winslow, what, what is the new reality company? That's a good question. Uh, we are a virtual reality and augmented reality content studio. We, but I think the difference is that we work mostly with social and environmental causes, but we're using the same video game engines that would be creating such popular titles as Fortnite or Player Unknown Battleground or you know, the same uh, software that would be used to create simulations for sports. But we really want to be able to use that same technology for positive, uh, for impactful storytelling. Fantastic. Great. And so um, can you tell us a little bit about your first project? Sure. Yeah. Our, our first project we started at the, the New Museum Incubator uh, under the leadership of Karen Wong and Julia Kagansky. And when we arrived there, we only had a script and an idea, a lot of passion to be able to create a project called Giant, in which you imagine what it's like to be in a family in, that's in an active war zone uh, during their last moments. And just like you know, the, the family, you were also surprised sort of learning what's happening. They're caught in the middle of a conflict. And as the parents are creating a narrative that there's a friendly giant that's approaching their daughter, or that's approaching, they're trying to uh, distract their daughter by telling them uh, of this narrative. And as the bomb blasts uh, approach, we also feel it in the chair. And so, you know, just like the, the family, we're, we're surprised by this. We're caught in the middle of the conflict. And we are imagining what it's like, because oftentimes Western audiences aren't able to, to, to be there, to, to feel that. Normally, conflict is just a headline that's on a news app that we can swipe away. So by bringing us closer to that, we wanted to be able to have audiences empathize with you know, th these situations that are happening to people, uh, millions of people all over the globe. And so that's the power that VR has to be able to, to put you in a place, to put you in somebody else's shoes, and then with Tree, which is our next project, to be able to put you in the roots uh, of the cause. Yeah, so I was so fortunate yesterday in my lunch break, I went across the street to the IMF building where uh, you're set up with your VR experience tree and I put on those goggles and um, I got to be immersed in that mind-blowing world. I'm, I'm not a gamer, I, I'm not quite you know, used to all of that, but uh, it really was incredible. So can you tell our audience a little bit about what this VR experience tree is that you've created and brought to the spring meetings this year? Sure thing. Um, with Tree, well, with Giant, we wanted to be able to, we thought of this as a trilogy, where Giant is the harm that humans do to each other, and then the next step is uh, understanding the harm that we do to nature. And especially with the, the most recent uh, IPCC report, uh, they were stating that, you know, th that we'll have irreversible climate change uh, events that will happen. I if we don't do something, it, there will be irreversible uh, harm in, in uh, 2040. And some people say it's, it's, it's already irreversible. So just like with Giant, we wanted to place you there, but not just in a basement with a family in a conflict zone, but what would it be like to imagine deforestation firsthand by placing you literally in the roots. Um, and in the experience, we give you a seed of the tree that you become, which you experienced yesterday, yeah, a kapok seed. seed, exactly, yeah. uh, in the Peruvian Amazon. And you, you plant it in a pot of soil. And when you put the headset on, you realize you've planted yourself in the soil. And just that physical interaction in the beginning makes it even more impactful of a narrative because you feel responsible for the journey that you're going to take. Um, and also with VR, it's not just about the storytelling that happens inside the headset, but it's really uh, important uh, for onboarding people to something that feels you know, so new, or something that they've never experienced before. You know, where, where does the storytelling begin? And for us, it's really the moment they hear about the story. So, when they plant the seed, they look up and they see this god ray piercing through the soil. Yeah, maybe we can and get that's, the, and that's where, the yes, and that's where they will begin their, their journey. Um, so, because we wanted to, to be able to make climate change feel personal, once you plant the seed, you, you see that you're, you're surrounded in the soil. And also, the Rainforest Alliance was yeah, a, a very important partner for us because they allowed us to understand this area in Peru called Madre de Dios, uh, which was 
uh, it, it's an area where there's many kapok trees, which are uh, a holy tree to the indigenous people there. And they're also one of the tallest trees and, and live to be the oldest. So this sacred tree we thought would be a perfect way to be able to, to embody this narrative. Uh, and as, as you grow uh, in, in the soil, when you plant the seed, we're also greeting you with smells. Uh, we work with international flavors and fragrances. There's this very authentic wet soil smell that is uh, really, uh, when you're underneath there, some people exclaim that it reminds them of being in the garden with their grandmother. Or everyone has memories that are closely uh, you know, linked because olfactory is you know, how we compartmentalize memories. It's also how we use, you know, how we trust what we're experiencing. So if this feels very familiar, then you know, then part of our brain is immersed even further to believe that we are a tree that is growing through the soil. And as we emerge through the soil, uh, we get to we get to see uh, all the wonder of nature that, that is around us. Um, and we created this in something called Unreal Engine. It's a popular video game engine, but that allows us to have this, this pretty photo real look. We work with the artist Jacob Kudsteinson um, to be able to create this. And what's also different between this and say 360 video, it, 360 video is a linear narrative, but in this, you actually have agency of movement. Uh, and with that, with, with the sense of presence, uh, it's, it's a lot more profound of an experience for the user. Uh, when, you're, when you reach out with your arm, a parrot can land on it. Uh, and so that, that feeling of, you know, obviously trees can't move their arms, but you, you, you sort of, there's a suspension of disbelief there, which is really powerful in, in VR in general. Um, so as we um, grow to be the tallest tree in, in the rainforest, uh, it's a very tranquil moment, and we wanted to make it uh, this sort of very zen feeling where you're, as soon as you reach the top, there's a, a beautiful sunset, and then you're greeted with a, with a, a view of the stars and a, and a gust of wind that hits you, and you're just, it, you're, it's just you in the forest and all the sounds of nature. You know, the, the, the jungle's very alive at night, but also with those sounds, you slowly hear uh, humans uh, creeping in and the sounds of machines as they're slowly cutting down the forest and, and, and burning it all around you, unfortunately. Uh, but this is the fate of far too many rainforest trees. And we wanted to be able to, to use yeah, this immersive, you know, new, it's a very new, VR's only been around for about four years, at least the ability for people to be able to, to, to do it, you know, not through government or like, you know, large contracts. Um, the first commercial VR headset was available um, about three years ago, and then the first developer kit was about four years ago. So this is all very new, and we also want to teach other people how we did this because, you know, there's so many other interesting stories to tell. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it really was mind blowing. So if uh, any of your audience, any of the audience, has a chance to experience the tree, I really recommend spending seven and a half minutes to um, blow your mind and hopefully move you to care about these issues. So can you tell us a bit more about your next projects? Sure. Um, with the next projects that we have, um, there's a. If, if, if you want to bring up the next slide. So uh, these are different places where we've been showing tree. We're still continuing to show it. We were just here at the IMF World Bank. And uh, we're actually going to be going next to, to China and some other, other places um, all over the globe. We've, uh, but as I was mentioning, that the third part of the trilogy, Breathe, we want to mix the narratives of giant and tree together and imagine what it's like to be the girl who survives giant. Um, but also witness her full life. As we use breath, we want to also eliminate uh, controllers, so we're going to be tracking your hands with a 3D camera called Leap Motion, and we have a custom breath sensor so that when you put the headset on, uh, as you move and as you breathe, you age. And witnessing key moments of the girl Rose's life, uh, we want everybody to imagine what it's like to be a little girl throughout key moments of her life, and then ultimately you know, witness all the joy uh, but also all the you know the hardship um, of getting over the the events that happen in Giant. Um, but then also as you exhale your final breath, your body dissolves into particles and you form the cosmos with four of the people who are also experiencing that. Um, you know these narratives are becoming even more important. Uh, you know under, understanding notions of peace, but also conservation, um, and you know how how can we show this to as many people as possible. Um, how do we influence as many people as possible? And how can we teach other people how to create their own narratives using this immersive video game engine technology? Um, so uh, we also were taking the learnings from, um, from Breathe and, and, and Tree and Giant, and we're creating a, an immersive uh, AR, VR game that we want to be able to experience on your mobile phone. We've shown uh, Tree after IMF to about 28,000 people, um, but 
You know, those numbers, we, we want to be able to show this to as many people as possible. Ideally, millions of people. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And so how do we tap into, you know, devices that people have already on their person? And so uh, with Rainforest, we want you to be able to scan your environment with your phone and then populate a rainforest in your own, in your own living space, in your own office, and then be able to develop a connection with it so that, you know, it, there's a certain intimate engagement with it. Anything that happens to it, you're more likely to feel responsible or to be able to, you want to do something about it. So once you develop this relationship, learn about the flora and the fauna, um, and also be able to connect with other people, share your rainforest. We also want to be able to give you push notifications, similar to how we deal with everything in our life already, if there's things that are threatening it as well. Um, just like what's happening you know, in rainforests all over the world. Uh, and with that too, we want to be able to get brands involved so that then they can be, you know, we can be uh, collaborating on their environmental initiatives too. Um, so that you know, this will be something that is discussed and hopefully you know, becomes uh, part of, any, anytime we can have an experience that becomes habitual, then we're more likely to, to actually do something about it. So we want this to be something you come back to and nourish, almost like a Tamagotchi, but as this sort of living, breathing rainforest in, in your own space. That and uh, if we show, actually I've got some, some gifts here that we can present oh, which great. will help. Uh, so the, in this, you know, we wanted to make this as intuitive as possible. So you follow these blue morpho butterflies around. Mm -hmm. So if you go from one area uh, in your environment to the next, it'll be sort of a wayfinding. Um, and it's something that's very intuitive. If you see butterflies fly, you're going to more likely, you know, you're, you want to follow them. you're, 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 you're uh, it, it's, it's, it's an obvious uh, interaction for us to, to want to follow them around. And if we go to the next, uh, VR and AR has the profound ability to play with time, space, and scale. So we wanted to, you to be able to, to put this in it on any surface. How do we miniaturize it so you can explore it within your own environment? And as you get closer, you can learn about things, and there's also mini games associated with um, all different parts of the rainforest, starting from the, the lowest all the way to above the canopy and the emergent layer. Um, and then if we go to the final slide, we also want to be able to give you a sense of, of what the actual scale is. So, um, you know, something can be miniature on, on your table, but how do we also bring it to life so you have an idea of how big and how sort of majestic all these different things in the rainforest actually are. And again, once you develop this more intimate connection with it, you're more likely to, to do something about it, to feel, you know, responsible for, for your rainforest, but also the planet at large. And after seeing people's reactions, you know, through tree and, and, and through some of the prototypes we have of rainforest, you know, we feel that we're we're able to to make a difference, and, and that's really what matters most to us as storytellers, but also as conservationists. You know, how can we how can we enable change? How can we work with places like uh, IMF, World Bank, uh, to be able to to inspire people to to make change? Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time, Winslow, and thank you for using your creative passion and your vision to try and change the world. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's no been a pleasure. Problem. Great. And thank you, too, to our online audience for joining us today. Keep your eye on this space. We still have more Global Voices discussions coming ahead. And please follow along on live.worldbank.org for all of the events from the spring meetings. Add your voice to the conversation with the hashtag WBGMeetings. My name is Lana Wong, and we'll see you online soon.